Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to a test iteration of a possible occurring thing in the future. Just a podcast talking about Doom and Doom-related stuff, things happening in the community, things we're doing, things we're playing. Just kind of a short time for us to ramble and talk about things on our head. Look, we have opinions, and by God, we want to tell you our opinions. <laughs> Currently with me, uh, I've got Kinsey. You all might know Hello. him as the creator of Realism, the current maintainer of Simsara, and currently working on Meta Doom. I, I know horrible code sets. <laughs> also with us is Sergeant Shivers, a very active and enthusiastic Doom player, and nobody else can quite match terms of Airbud lore as he. Yep. Unfortunately, also, he's... this is not an Airbud podcast, so... <laughs> I think he's also done sprites, like, every now and then for a couple projects. You might have seen him on a couple credits list somewhere. Or on your Tumblr dashboard. Yeah. Uh, we currently don't really have a title for this sort of thing. I mean, Kinsey suggested things like uh, Sector Defectors and Def Simple. I mean, I kind of like Def Simple, and it's pretty nice. Yeah, that could work. I like it. Yeah. Could call it something like PR Boom Mike Plus. That's mm. actually kind of awful. <laughs> nah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's jump straight in, talk about uh, the current going ons in the Doom community. How about that new Vine Sauce mapping contest, huh? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Just sort of coming out of nowhere from a sort of a source that the community in general wouldn't really have been paying too much attention to. Yeah. I mean, with all of the uh, e-celebs going around lately, a lot have been focusing on Doom a lot. I mean, there's been a lot of retrospectives on Doom, a lot of uh, reviews on Doom, a lot of classic takes on Doom. It's almost like something big happened to the franchise recently. Yeah, you know, I don't know what, though. I'm kind of... Exp I'm not sure what to expect with the whole wine source thing. I mean, either it's going to be a whole bunch of amateur to expert maps coming out of nowhere... Or it's going to be an excuse to shove as many Vine Source memes into a Doom map as possible. Either way, yeah. it's pretty interesting. Could be both. <laughs> it's it's actually kind of interesting. I mean, 2006 as a whole just seems to be like a year of new mappers. There's been a lot of things introducing new folks, new maps to the community. I mean, there's been Dump, there's been Joy of Mapping by Jimmy, there's been the Vine Soft contest, and there's also been like other YouTube and Tumblr personalities trying their hands and making their first maps. I mean, like that uh, Icarus Lives guy, he kind of made a big fuss about making map for a first time. Well, this also happened good. when Doom 3 came out in 2004. I think that was one of the biggest years for uh, submissions to the id Games FTP. I remember seeing that as a on a graph. So I think it's just like when a new game in the series comes out, people revisit the old games and see how easy they are to edit and mod and... It just creates a sort of an upsurge. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of Doom 4, there's been quite a surge of Doom 4-based mods coming out, but like, haven't there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's uh, also a part of the trend. Like, when Doom 3 came out, there was also a big old surge of, like, really dark, atmospheric map sets. We got stuff like a Legacy of Th Suffering, the Doom 2.5 sprites that everyone uses. What? Yeah. Everyone using sprites that are slightly edited model rips from a new game? That'll never happen again. <laughs> Maybe next time they'll actually have animations. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> but, there's, uh... The Doom 3 mashups, the Doom 64 mashups, now the Doom 4 mashups. So far, off the top of my head, there's been, like, a Argent, there's been Zion, Doom 4 Doom, and... Wasn't there like another Doom 4 mod? I can't I can't even remember the title. That's how there absolutely was. It forgettable was like a, it was. This guy's like, I'm making a Doom 4 mod, but it's not like any of those other ones, and it's not directly based on Doom 4, and then it's a gameplay preview and it's it's just Doom 4. Yeah, and then there was another one with about a uh, hundred megabytes of Realm 667 enemies, and that was like advertised as a feature. Oh Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There was one that looked legitimately interesting, where there was like a melee combo system instead of glory kills. Like, you'd enter into a short barrage of punches and then they'd explode into health bonuses. Just there was really also neat. that, like, Brutal Doom add-on thing, but... I haven't played it, but I haven't heard fantastic things about that. Yep. Yeah, it honestly just seems like bandwagon jumping for the sake of bandwagon jumping. 
Which, honestly, you could probably say about a lot of brutal. Oh, did I just say that out loud? Oh! <laughs> okay, uh, did that opinion <laughs> counter to one? <laughs> Yeah, Kenzie, uh, you, you're actually, uh, you're taking a lot of inspiration from Doom 4 for Metadoom, aren't you? Yeah, using like, a lot of, taking some inspiration, taking some assets, because Metadoom is sort of supposed to be, uh, like, there's all these Doom 4 remake mods, there used to be a bunch of Doom 3 remake projects when that came out. I sort of wanted to do sort of a project that sort of blended every game together into one homogenous clump. Hmm. And we can expect to see stuff from, like, the novels, the RPGs, and uh, the 32X games, right? I have a cheat code in there that does the plain color flats and the SNES, so... You know, if I can find the assets for it, then... Nothing is, uh, off the table. Good. Unless it's hear... shit. <laughs> well, Kenzie, if you get the funding for it, would you be interested in recreating 3DO-style cutscenes with live actors Ooh. and terrible green screening? Oh, God. Sure, if you'll just go over to my Patreon page. <laughs> and then from there, let's uh, jump straight to the next uh, point of discussion, what we've been playing recently. Like, uh, what have you all been playing recently? Um, yeah. Well, I've been playing Legend Doom with the Telosian incident. Uh, I played through that with another mod a while back, but... Uh, yeah, Legend Doom and Colorful How, it's been a pretty fun experience. Um, a lot of areas where I'm like, oh man, I'm really done for now. I mean, I can't possibly get past this enemy. And then I just find some kind of way to cheese it, and then they drop like a super mega death gun. Yeah, things were pretty fun. Yeah. I tried uh, Colorful Hell and uh, Legend Doom together at some point with uh, Valiant Vaccinated Edition. I actually didn't really enjoy it. Really? I think the problem is that. Uh, there's a habit for low-tier monsters to suddenly get replaced at level start of uh, much more dangerous monsters when you're at a position where you can't really fight back against that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when that's combined with Legend Doom's uh, legendary monster system, it can be very hard to start a run. Yeah, Legend Doom is definitely making monsters very, very brutal. See, I find it's a really good way to spice up, like, more, I don't know, easy map sets if it's pretty like bare map set with only like uh, less than 100 monsters per map sort of thing then chucking in some colorful power monsters is always fun i think i also don't really like how they did the palette swaps they just seem kind of gaudy yeah the the palette swaps are very just well, and I mean, when you combine that with the increased difficulty it just sort of feels like rom hack doom oh wait until you get to the next update Cactus Hedge has already confirmed that there's going to be a fire blue tier of monsters. <sighs> <laughs> that said, that is multiplayer only, so that'll be interesting to see what he does with that. Yeah, multiplayer pretty much inherently makes a lot of map sets easier. I mean, that's kind of obviously considering due to the respawn factor, you can just, if you die, hit use, die, hit use, die, hit use, die, hit use, etc, etc, etc. But even with that in mind, even just two players, that is basically double the firepower, double the damage, and half the damage. Mm. And when they've both got legendary weapons, well, yeah. <laughs> hot knife, like, butter, so on and so forth. Well, in this case, it'd be more hot <laughs> chainsaw. Hot. What about you, Kins? Well, uh, most of my gameplay has been with uh, Metadoom recently, since I'm working on that and testing changes and that. But I've been trying different map sets as I do it, mm -hmm. to sort of get a different uh, look, feel for certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, first off, uh, not really a map set, but uh, Wad Smoosh by J.P. LeBrayton. Oh yeah, Wad Smoosh. Which is a utility that basically takes all the official uh, Doom iWads that you have, like Doom 2, TNT, Plutonia, the Master Levels, etc. And merges them together into one game. And Even that's like been the Master Levels? Yeah, and that's been really uh, useful for me because I can just jump between games to see how things affect certain map sets. Is there any trouble with like conflicting textures or patches being in the wrong places or things looking slightly weird? There have been in the past, but he's sort of worked around some of those. Hmm. I think there's still a couple here and there. How does it uh, handle like uh, loading up custom map sets with it? Like if you load Scythe 2 with Wad Smooshed Doom 2? Well, Doom 2 is still using Map 01, Map 02, etc, etc. Like TNT and Plutonia have been renamed. Hmm, interesting. And Ultimate Doom is still the uh, E1M whatever. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And another map set I've been playing around with recently is uh, the Ultimate Doom 2. 
mm. which isn't finished. It sort of takes like the basic concepts from the Doom 2 maps and rebuilds them to be larger, more detailed, more monsters. Is that the one by uh, Gardevoir, I think? Yeah. Yeah, Gardevoir's a pretty good mapper. He's been uh, making a lot yeah. of really interesting maps for like the dump and such. Yeah, and it's it feels really good. It's sort of like... I guess it's sort of what uh, some projects like a Knee Deep in Doom or whatever probably should have been. Mm -hmm. In that the... Uh, well, Knee Deep in Doom's failures are reasonably documented. <laughs> yep. But like, the maps are larger, there's more monsters, but they're manageable still. There are key hunts, but they're not like multi-hour long ones. And the enemy count, I mean, because it's amped up, there's always a battle in order to make things interesting. Yeah, you just have to follow the screens to find out where you're supposed to go. <laughs> you know, coming to think of it, Knee Deep and Z Doom is like, I guess, looked down on as it is these days. I think it really does have quite a, like, it's fondly remembered by the community. Uh, who knows, maybe we'll get Knee Deep and Knee Deep and Z Z Doom sometime where people tend to reboot it. There is. <laughs> there was Knee Deep and Knee Deep in Z Doom. It was uh, an attempt to demake Knee Deep in Z Doom and make it a boom compatible map set with less detail and more straightforward layouts. Hmm. It kind of uh, died. Yeah, I asked Jimmy about it when he was streaming Knee Deep in Z Doom recently. I think what he basically said is that it is deliberately dead and forgotten and should probably not be brought up again. <laughs> <laughs> Some things should just be left locked behind doors. And then there's yeah. the uh, the Shores of Hell, which supposedly is still in development. Somewhere under a desk at Valve. I think it's safe to say that people aren't really interested in if it's coming out, and the developers are probably not actually interested in working on it again. Just another corpse in the abandoned projects cupboard. Cupboard? I think at this point it's probably going to be like an entire fucking basement. What kind of person would do that, though? Just abandon the project that they've been working on for however many years. <sighs> for me, myself, I'm... I, I'm probably going to get a last out of my, I'm probably going to get laughed out of my own podcast. Uh, at the risk of sounding like a total tool, uh, recently I've been playing some uh, some jump maze. <laughs> so yeah. that, that's what I've been hearing you guys go on about. Yeah, I mean, I could talk about all the classic map sets I've been running through, like Requiem or Hell Revealed or etc., but no, nah, I'm going to talk about the casual ass which is Skulltag mod, Jump Mad, which has been around for ever since Skulltag was a thing. You know... From the dark uh, eras of Lord Carnival. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I I don't dislike it. I mean, there's a whole shit ton of bloat. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole ton of ancient ass memes about mudkips being blue. Da ba dee da ba die. And, uh, yeah, there's a shitty community, and boy, I'm listing a whole bunch of negatives. Boy. Jump maids hate my balls. <laughs> <laughs> but the base concept is base concept's kind of fun. I mean, there's a lot of appeal in going fast, leaping across massive pits. I mean, it's kind of like defrag, but clunkier. You know, um... I suppose like having voice chat with your friends while you're doing that sort of incre improves the uh, like the gameplay because you're shouting at each other the whole time. Yeah. Um, I played, I think, a few maps with you and Kura way back when, and something that's really striking me about uh, a lot of, like, Xandro, Skelltag maps for multiplayer is that a lot of the mods that are Stranger, like a uh, Whodunit, or a Jump Maze, or even some Invasion maps, while their gameplay style is kind of weird, they've also got some really creative map settings in that, like, I think there was a level that was in like a factory or whatever, and you had to maneuver through that. Yeah. And then there's like um, other levels, which is all sort of like a racetrack or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing you don't see in single player, like regular Doom, very often, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, recently. Yeah, it's uh, hmm? it's interesting. I think because single play maps, people sort of try and slot them into either multiple map sets or trying to keep them within the Doom setting, and that sort of restricts what you can do. Mm -hmm. With the multiple map sets, because they have to flow between each other naturally. While with the Doom setting, you basically got your tech bases, you got your hell, you got your what crate rare warehouses. Where with multiplayer, you basically have more of a license to play around with settings and sort of mess around a bit. License to go batshit. Mm. Basically, well, I mean, yeah. 
I guess when people play Doom, they expect Doom, but when people play something like Jump Maze or Push, they have no idea what to expect, so yeah. it's a lot less jarring to be thrown into, say, some kind of underwater raceway. Yeah, it's kind of hard to gather expectations when the big promotional image for the mod is two stick figures pointing at each other. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll have you know those stick figures are probably Shiver's best drawings yet. Artisanal yep. handcrafted stick figures. <laughs> One thing that uh, one thing that someone brought up in a review of Dump or Dump Two, one of the two, I can't exactly remember which, which honestly says a lot about me as a community manager. But uh, one thing that a reviewer brought up is how eclectic the variety of maps were, because there was a little bit of something for everyone in that. There was the traditional Doom levels, but there were also the art pieces. There were also the tech showcases. There were the maps that didn't look that impressive but played really well and there were the maps that looked really fancy and you know they kind of played okay i i kind of have to wonder if that's really part of the appeal of a big community project just sort of so many different perspectives coming together in one big cluster yeah sort of like a party mix yeah Speaking of the more classic side, I've also been trying to study a lot of the classic map sites lately. I mean, outside of the modern jump maze, which, you know, is for casual casual scum and you'll never see me playing it ever. <laughs> Don't tell anyone that I play it. There's like a Requiem and Hell Revealed and etc. And Scythe has always been really, really near and dear to my heart. There's... I like half your mods built to be played with Scythe. <laughs> Demon Seal, it was... Pretty much, I tested it on Scythe too so much, it's practically built around that mod. Except for the whole jumping aspect, you know. Can you imagine if that, like, that sort of flowed back? Hey, Scythe 4 is out! Why does it have, like, morph ball tunnels? <laughs> <laughs> it's That's actually kind of interesting, considering uh, Valve was specifically designed so that the author could test it out with, like, a Demon Steel and check it out, and that, that's really kind of interesting. We, we're really at the era where gameplay mods and level sets are kind of crossing over back and forth. Yeah, there's the, this nice little interplay, since so many, since so many map sets are designed for boom, which sort of de-emphasizes custom monsters since you have to fuck around with de-hacked. Ugh. Ugh. That makes them especially compatible with uh, gameplay mods. Well, except for the so to... Commander Keen and the Wolfenstein SS yeah, slot. Yeah, and occasionally the boss brain. Yeah. So that leads to this interchange where, like, map sets and gameplay mods are sort of being made with each other in mind. And sometimes that works out well with Valiant Vaccinated Edition, as you mentioned and the scythe maps work out really well. It's also worked out to be a problem in the past with people screaming, Why, did, why is this so hard in Brutal Doom? <laughs> yeah. so so you know, that brings to mind this thing I was discussing with somebody um, a while back, is that one of the big problems with someone like trying to make a gameplay mod for a specific level set or like a TC sort of thing, is like, you'll always inevitably, inevitably get a group of people who's like, Oh man, why can't I play this with so and so or something like this? Or then you'll get like a, a really strange map set. It's like, wouldn't this be better with its own weapons? Or maybe a gameplay mod which is, this is great, but really the levels don't really fit it. You need to make new ones. And it's just kind of this endless cycle where you'll never really please everyone. Or the age old complaint heard ever since the dawn of gameplay mods. Boy, this gameplay mod is great, but it'd really benefit from its own levels. It's okay, I'm making new gameplay levels for Demon Steel. In Edge. <laughs> oh god! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Scrolling back a little bit, I mean, that's going back to discussion of classic maps a little. They're classic maps, sorry. There's been a lot of talk about aesthetics and maps recently, especially with Skill Saw's absolutely incredible work. And I think probably one of the most recent examples of aesthetics in map, probably Ancient Aliens. And Ancient Aliens, if you look on the Doom World forum, there's actually been discussion of bringing a new category to the CAC Awards called Best Aesthetics for maps which just look absolutely beautiful. And it's really nice in contrast how a lot of older map sets manage to cement an area's look with only a couple line depths and sectors. 
I mean, early on in Requiem, there's a really neat level where it's snowy outside, and then you go inside in some kind of slime hell factory. And then throughout the level, you keep going from snow to factory to hell temple to natural caverns, and it just keeps mixing up the environments, all with just a couple textures and sectors. Yeah, it's interesting because half of the battle with, the, like, uh, detailing a Doom map is the lines, while the other half is the textures. And you can't lean on either for everything. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you basically just have these big, loose uh, tunnels with, like, intricate paintings wallpapered onto them. Yeah. Or you have, like, these massive detail environments with just these low-res textures on them. You need to strike this interesting little balance. Mm -hmm. and then you've got uh, things like uh, going down by Syriac, and I just, I, I fucking hate Syriac. I mean, I don't actually hate him, but I am... He's so talented, it is almost infuriating. <laughs> yes, just the way he can look at these raggedy-ass Doom textures and go, oh yeah, I can see how I can make a giant gaping mall of hell that are straight from people's nightmares out of this. I'm sure people will never have seen this before, and true enough, they haven't. And then you get to this level where you have to open up a dude's teeth, and a whole horde of hells keep coming coming out, and you have to shut down his eyes one by one. And then there's this T, or tree, not T. There's this tree which is watching your every movement. It's tricky. <laughs> I hate him. Hearing uh, Linguica talk about, he asked Syriac what his favorite effect in going down was. And apparently it was something that was relatively uh, mundane, like a monster closet, like a random monster closet opens each time you go through a specific corridor. It's never always just the same one, which is reasonably simple to do in Zedum, but he did it in Boom. Mm -hmm. And it's something that you'd never really notice unless you played the map multiple times, but that's what he was most proud of. Yeah, and worked out really, really well. It's great. And it sort of makes you wonder, like, what modders, what mappers, where their favorite part of their project is something that most people wouldn't notice. And jumping straight off from there, stuff that we've been working on recently. So, uh, Kenzie, I'm sure we have no idea what you've been working on recently. <laughs> I am a promotional whore. <laughs> um, so I've been working on Metadoom more. Last night I added a couple of new monsters. The uh, Hell Knight, using Xaneon's amazing Rights of a retextured Doom 4 Hell Knight. Mm -hmm. He sort of acts like the original uh, Doom Hell Knight with his projectiles, but he also has like the jump attack from uh, Doom 4. Mm -hmm. and that helps mix things up a little bit. And uh, I also added the Hellraiser from Doom 4. Mm. You use the sprites from the carnival? Huh? The, oh the yeah, guy. from the Sprite Carnival. Sorry, I thought you were even like Carnival. <laughs> <laughs> and I got very, very confused for a second. Credit him or else he'll throw a fit. It's, uh, after working on with like things like uh, Samsara, it probably feels really, really good to be using all the cutting edge super new features, right? Oh man, I am cutting the fuck loose. <laughs> it's like, oh hey, I don't have to make individual sprites for an object rotating anymore. Oh yeah. Oh hey, I can have multiple actions per frame. Oh hey, I don't have to worry about Zandronum compatibility. Oh god. Poor Zandronum. Here's Zandronum 3.0, I mean, it's been almost a year and a half since it was announced to come out. And it's still in, like, developer builds, and Zandronum 4.0 is still scheduled for the year 2050. Yeah. There was actually a little bit of a discussion in the Zandronum uh, testing channel earlier. Someone is uh, making a mod specifically for Zandronum 4.0 compatibility. Oh, that poor devil. <laughs> and the, one of the developers just straight up asked him, why? Why, why don't you just do it for GZ Doom at that point? There is so much stuff broken in Meta, Meta Doom for multiplayer at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I really need to knuckle down and take care of it, but there's not really much of a point to it. Yeah. Because since it's not compatible with uh, Zandronum, the only way to play it in multiplayer is through GZ Doom Netplay. And with all <laughs> respects to the people who have worked on uh, <laughs> their network code over the years, it's not very a very intuitive or stable process. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I hope you like command prompt. And desyncs. And X. <laughs> oh, Shivers, I'm sure you could regale us with so many tales of Z-Doom that play and your adventures there within. Yeah, when even the people working on it are like, well, that's no kind of worrying. Yeah, it's kind of not really a 
It's not really. Oh, this is. It stopped sending ack messages and started sending hunger messages. <laughs> it, it's really kind of saying something that uh, the only channel that was regularly uploading uh, GZ Doom multiplayer videos and anything to do with GZ Doom multiplayer is the developer. And everyone else was all, wait, GZ Doom has multiplayer? It's a, it's kind of a shame that, like, it's not as well maintained as it used to be. But I guess that's just a uh, side effect of some of the strange stuff it's been having with the source mods lately. But that said, um, playing GZ Doom and Z Doom mods with, in multiplayer is some of the craziest stuff, man. Like, it's so fun using that cutting edge stuff and being able to interact with your friends at the same time. Oh yeah, realism multiplayer back in the day was just oh so much fun. When it was playable. <laughs> well, let's not uh, let's not overstep our boundaries here. Yeah, realism was never playable. Nah, we're squad 2014. What about you, Shivers? What sort of stuff have you been doing lately? Well, um that's a good question. I mean, other than the general sprite stuff. He's been um, doing everything. At least that's what it feels like lately. Uh, let me just crack open my recent work folder. We got. Uh... Oh, we just hear a creaking sound and <laughs> the screams of the damned reaching out. <laughs> Essentially. There are so many shotguns! <laughs> Actually, I've looked through his collection once, and he has, like, so many MP5 sprites. I, I think I have, like, 12 <laughs> entire animation sets from him alone, and I'm pretty sure that's only. About a quarter of his total collection. I've never sent anyone my full collection. I don't think people are ready for that kind of. How do you even combine a Labrador with a shotgun? <laughs> hey, hey, I actually. No, actually, it was a pistol. Right? Close. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, I did recently, well, recently in the biggest quotes you can find, uh, put together the hub map for Dump 3, which is looking pretty good. Now it just needs time to finish it. <laughs> Didn't you Not say term. that your next dev house stream was going to be doing dump three stuff? What did you do today, Tom? I didn't watch your stream. Uh, I did somewhat map related things. You made elevator sounds. I made With elevator sounds. <laughs> 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 now, I did a little uh, bit of mapping today, but I ended up having to call the stream early because I was dead. I was completely dead. As for the uh, the map, it's been really fun, actually, considering how much more massive the hub map is compared to the one I made for Dump 1 way back when. Which was yeah, excellent. because there's, like, so yeah. many more goddamn maps to deal with. Uh, there's only around 80. <laughs> God. I, I swear to not God. Not that many. Yes, there is that many. Uh, it's been neat. I've been putting in tons of secret areas that you don't really get anything in, but it's just cool to find them. I think there's four or so now. Uh, cause of the secret maps? Uh, no, they're just there to encourage people to look around the map. Alright. It's kind of interesting, but at the same time, I mean, I, I kind of like secrets with a tangible reward tied to them. Like, there's a reason to explore around. Yeah, other than just like, here's a quick joke. I was considering putting like, maybe contributor stuff in there, or just easter eggs, but other than that, I don't know. <sighs> Man, Dump 3. Jeez. 2016 is the year I've wanted to get better at mapping, which I've demonstrated by not actually finishing a lot of maps. <laughs> Lord knows I've started a lot, though. I mean, there's the Dump Project, which, of course, I, I really need to get back to, but... Fiddling with other people's maps and integrating updates and fiddling more and then integrating updates and then messing with everything and then seeing what's broken, it's just... Uh, it has burned me out so hard. I mean, that's not a justification for the stupid delays, but... I mean, I just... I want to get back to actually mapping and not updating and maintaining. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about a term. I mean, in terms of things I haven't been working on, there's Laundry 3, which is sitting on mostly all the maps completed, and... Uh, I don't know, I guess there's something I'm supposed to be doing with it. It's not done yet. <laughs> you're, right, still aiming now, for, man. you're still aiming for a Halloween release, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Guess I am. Better get on that. <laughs> Probably. I'll do that as soon as the podcast is over, he says as he opens up another Dogs with Guns Tumblr tab. Uh, <laughs> hang on a minute. Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs>
Uh, as for me, myself, I mean, of course, I've been working on the booty. I, I need a proper name for that sort of thing. Do you really? Yes. I think if the booty project appeared on Steam under that name, it would probably get a whole bunch of purchases based on that name alone. And then a whole bunch of returns. Yeah, a whole bunch of refunds upon finding <laughs> out it's not a visual novel. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, we just cannot stick with the ass-based names forever. Primarily lately, I've been doing a lot of work on the under-the-hood stuff. Replacing placeholders with better placeholders, rehauling code, making things more different than clean. And then it's just, I get to the maps that I need to do, and I just kind of... Bonk. I, I just get stuck. I mean, even on the dev house stream I was doing, I opened up the map, and just a couple hours later, I was dead. I was completely dead. I have this weird process when I was working on my two dump maps, where I'd like build an area and be like, oh, this is kind of shit house. Uh. Then I'd come back the next day, completely delete all of yesterday's work and redo it way better. Which is terrible for productivity, but resulted in good work. Yeah. It's like, uh, dump stuff on, cut it off bit by bit, then dump stuff on, cut it off bit by bit, dump stuff on, cut it off bit by bit. Mapping as a whole has just been something I kind of struggle with. I mean, it's real frustrating. Playing through the maps is real easy, and enjoying them is also really easy. To use the Getting them to cooperate together and uh, actually making them is not your forte. Yeah, you try and study them, and there's this sort of nebulous, out-of-reach something that makes them really good compared to their contemporaries, and I don't really know what, and I can't really latch onto it. I mean, you take something like... Uh, uh, what are some examples? Uh, Zone 300, Demon Fear, and Scythe. All three of them are pretty much the exact same style of compact maps that can be beaten in a couple minutes, low enemy counts, open areas. But out of the three, Scythe is the clear winner. Why? I, I, I don't know. It's just... It's better. Why is it better? I, it's... Funner? Funner isn't a word. But I don't know. It's funner? And so when are you starting an IGN term? <laughs> With writing this good, I should probably work for Polygon. Oh! <laughs> and it's even more frustrating when it comes to my own map-making endeavor, because I'm trying to plan out areas, and I don't really know what works and what doesn't. And recently I just tried, uh, tried to ask a couple of the mapping titans about their own process, how they plan things out, how they make things work. And uh, can you guess what their answer generally boiled down to? Draw a bunch of shapes and put corridors between them. I don't. Yeah, their answer was pretty much, uh, corridors and rooms. One guy in particular, I think it was Skill Soul or Soul 40 I'm one of the two, uh, they said, first I draw a box, then I stare at it, and an hour later, I find myself curled up on the floor crying. Yeah, that sounds... That sounds about right. <laughs> the best That's of... both my creative process and my love life. <laughs> The best advice for mapping that I've seen to be found just seems to be just wing it, which honestly doesn't really comfort. I thought it was because of my inexperience, but then I do a bit of study, and it turns out a lot of the really great map sets are just made on the fly. I mean, Speed of Doom, Genesis, even Scythe. Yes, I keep talking about Scythe. I love Scythe. What are you going to do about it? They're old speed maps that were just made on the fly. They're magnificent, and they were just kind of shout out, what the hell am I going to do? Yeah, I mean, that even whole... going down that... was one of those... Let's, I'll just make a map every day or something like that. Yeah. That whole speedy plan, lack of planning thing also sort of occurs with uh, professional AAA games in modern game engines, in which instead of like sort of just outright starting winging it in the editor itself, they outright wing it on a whiteboard, drawing out the, the design, sort of playing through it, verbally explaining it to other people, and sort of making changes and, ju and adjustments there based on reactions. Actually, um, there's an image that's been going around Twitter, the whiteboard test by Robert Yang, talking about this very thing. He, like, asking some, a new hire to draw a level design on a whiteboard, and, like, what the results sort of mean based on their experience in that. Ranging from, has never used a level editor before, to, like, uncharted levels of off-grid design and that. It's, it's really kind of interesting because with gameplay mods, you can explicitly point out areas to improve. This weapon is too strong. Polish up the graphics. 
this item is useless, this enemy is too strong, this random spawner needs to be a little more rare. But then you get to maps and everyone, even the people in the know, they're like, I don't know, I do it oh, better. That said, um, there is a lot of, like, with maps, it's the same as gameplay mods. If you don't play it over and over and over and over again, running through it, running through it with, like, I don't know, someone else trying to speedrun it, trying to UV max it, you're not going to get the full experience that people are going to get from the mod, and you're not going to, I don't know, you're not going to find the things that could be added to it that could make it, you know, excellent. Mm, yeah. And I guess with speed maps, the, the thing with them is that you can't spend that much time thinking about playing it in different ways, so it's usually designed around one playstyle. I mean, how many people do you know that play Scythe with, I don't know, a more exploratory playstyle? Yeah, it's definitely not designed for that. I think another thing is when it comes to the speed mapping style, what really works in its favor is that you're just throwing things at a whiteboard and seeing what sticks. And because they're speed maps, if you have to cut something, uh, no worry, I'll just remake this idea and do it in a slightly different twist. Yeah, like I said earlier with uh, my dump maps, mm -hmm. I just outright cut areas and rebuilt them way bigger and better. It, it's really kind of weird on these two complete opposite ends of the spectrum. with. Mapping, it's better to just go on the fly. You throw stuff, you cut it off, you throw stuff, you cut it off. With gameplay mods, you've got these big old design documents. You have to write down, plan, prepare. What do these items do? What do these weapons do? What replaces what? How is this enemy going to be done? What code features can I make use of? Etc, etc. And maybe this is one of the reasons why there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, overlap between gameplay modders and mappers. Maybe. I think it's also because it's very sort of very different skill sets. Yeah, with uh, gameplay mods, you have to deal with more the programming and scripting side of things, while uh, mapping is very uh, visually focused and sort of flow-based, I guess, for lack of a better term. Come to think of it, uh, when you are mapping, though, you have to have a very strong understanding of the gameplay mechanics you're working with. So, like. Maybe one of the reasons that you don't see many maps for gameplay mods is that it, there's really just not been enough time to play it, understand it, and see what you can do with it, compared to the, what, 22 years we've been using, playing Doom and understanding it? Yeah, there's also the universal appeal. I mean, if someone signs up at the ZDoom forums or at Doom World, chances are they play Doom, they like playing Doom, and they want to play more stuff with Doom there is not too high a chance that they're looking for maps to play with Wild Weasel's Nazis. Yeah. I So, I guess to, to summarize this part of the conversation, I'm looking forward to playing Dump and Steal in 2050. Oh, God. Don't joke about that, man. I was considering putting together a map jam for either Demon Steel or another gameplay mod sometime, maybe even this year. Yeah, one of the things uh, Shivers suggested for Dump 3 when we were talking about uh, ideas that'd be good, uh, one thing Shivers suggested is that everyone picks a gameplay mod, and then they make a single map based around that. You get one gameplay mod that everyone makes map around, rather. That way it's more focused. Something for Psychic, uh, something for Russian Overkill, which, honestly, the only thing I can see fitting Russian Overkill would be, like, nuts for Chillax. <laughs> Actually, you know what could be interesting is... Um, finding some kind of way to make enemies that are beefed up enough to make Russian Overkill fun, but not enough to make it so that it's like just a meat uh, bullet sponge fist. Yeah. Uh, Something like a uh, Terms Dan Maku mod that he made for Kura's birthday. Yeah. Mm. Actually, been uh, one of the recent conversations I had with Pillow Blaster. He was talking about uh, how he's learned he's not really explicitly a fan of Overkill recently. Well, fuck. That's probably the wrong, the wrong phrase to use. Then. <laughs> That's probably the wrong phrase to use, but he's more very much a fan of a very, very dramatic action on either way. Either you kill enemies fast or enemies kill you fast. And one thing he's really thinking of for a gun caster is having its own enemy set, which is toggleable via Sivar, and all of the enemies just turn into outright sheer bastards, which can very, very quickly whittle you down in a couple seconds. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Something, this sort of very fast-paced, kill them before they kill you sort of thing. Yeah. And on the other hand, I mean, I, I kind of like the idea of it, but on the other hand, it could probably 
turn very south very quickly and see all the Realm 667 randomizer mods with monsters that insta-kill you. I was, you when you said stuff. going south, I was thinking more of the issues people had with uh, brutal dooms changing of uh, enemy balance, which would render certain situations borderline impossible to deal with that would otherwise be fine in vanilla gameplay. Oh, yeah, yeah, like... Uh... I'm pretty sure I... that one bit in uh, the factory when you're surrounded by forums is impossible to get out of. Uh, you could always drop a grenade at your foot now, that's a new feature. That doesn't seem very effective, honestly. Mm. Unless it's like in Demon Steel where explosions don't hurt you. I, 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 still think, I still think punching people with grenades is one of the best design decisions ever to come out of a gameplay mod. <laughs> when it first appeared in Project MSX, I was like, YES! These are my people. <laughs> yeah, Project MSX, it's 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 glorious. It takes the whole enemies modifying with the player's abilities, and it really just hits it all the way home. All of the enemies, they are dangerous. They are very dangerous. They are very powerful. But at the same time, the player has a lot of ways in order to deal with them, to handle them, and to protect himself from them. And that's sort of what you... Want really? You either want to have it like where both sides are equally dangerous to each other, and battles like fast, furious, like a few seconds of frantic thrashing, much like my love life, <laughs> or you want basically the juvenile power fantasies, mm -hmm. sort of just cutting through hordes like a hot chainsaw through butter. Yeah, it's sort of this constant back and forth tug of war. I mean, the player needs to be able to have a variety of skills to get rid of situations and the enemies need to be able to create those situations for the player to get out of. It's you a know, very interesting sort of power dynamic. That reminds me, um, another gameplay mod I've been playing semi-recently is Arachnophobia by, I think its name's GAA something. Oh god, uh, Arachnophobia. It's interesting because the enemies are pretty weak. I mean, one hit from the melee weapon will kill about, like half of them. And then all your other weapons, as it gets higher, they wipe the floor with them. Yeah. But all your guns are kind of not excellent. They're slow to reload, almost shut up and bleed level. So it's an interesting dynamic where both the player and the enemy is a pretty wimpy. And I mean that in the best possible way. And it's surprising because it leads to a really satisfying mod to play. I mean, oh no, there's four spiders in that room there and I've got a crowbar and a flamethrower. But I want to use that flame bros, so... If I had to give my vote to, like, the underdog of 2016 when it comes to gameplay mods, it would definitely be arachnophobia. I mean, there's a lot of issues with it. There's... The sounds are... Yeah, the graphics are very ill-fitting, and there's so many balance issues, it's not even funny. But just the idea is so unique, and the way it handles the gameplay, it's, it's really a solid idea. A very solid idea, and it's executed in a very cool way. Just needs a lot of spit polish. Oh, my mistake. It's actually called Arachnocide. Oh, yeah. Arachnocide. Well, now I look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, let me just praise this mod that I don't remember the name of. <laughs> yeah, so how's that other mod coming along? The the Smarmass. The Sim Smarmass. Smarnoff. <laughs> when are you fixing Berserk, Kenzie? <laughs> actually... Hmm. When are you How adding Carlton? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a good time to start wrapping this up. Any last words? Um, no, I mean, that's. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for now. Covered everything we need to, and got a decent amount of time to spare. So. And I think we'll have plenty to talk about next week with the recent announcements and the impending announcements. Mm -hmm. We are doing this next week, right? I'm thinking like either weekly, bi-weekly, probably bi-weekly. I'm down with weekly, or bi-weekly, either or. Yeah, it gives us a lot of time to work on stuff, to dig up news, and to play through like a map set or a gameplay mod or whatever. I'm but, down. Yeah, it really depends on what the audience is interested in. and If they like this, if they don't like this, if they think it's core, cool, if they think we're a bunch of pretentious stuck-up blowhards. Which, you know... Or both. Yeah, not mutually exclusive, so... Alright, so please uh, feel free to let us know what y'all think about this. We ran on a little bit longer than I expected, just under an hour, but... Uh, kind of expecting that, <laughs> to be honest. Thank you for listening. Uh, please feel free to provide 
any suggestions, criticisms, critiques, yelling at us how much we suck, tell us our mods suck, tell us we have no idea what we're talking about, etc., etc. The usual. Yes, the usual. <laughs> Alright, see you all next time, and thank you for listening in. Have a nice week. It's been real. Bye week, double week, week, month, whatever. And, yeah. See you when Dump 3 comes out. Oh, God. I don't think they can wait until 2012 Part 2. 2012 2. It's 2012-er.